very experienced baker in our house reports that uh, the oven is getting too hot. In other words, whatever bake temp you set it to, uh, it's the baker's belief that the oven is actually exceeding that temp. So, um, step one, which is a quick step, we're gonna pull the temperature sensor, uh, this device right here, out of the oven. We're gonna loosen one screw, which will pull this out, and there'll be an electrical connector that will undo. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, here we've taken the screw out. We have pulled the temperature sensor forward from this hole. Uh, it's just pushed back in there and pull all the way out until you reach this connector. And then you're just gonna press the tab on the connector to release that and get the sensor out of the oven. Okay, we've got the sensor entirely removed now. And uh, basically there's just two pins here and we are going to check between these pins uh, with an ohm meter. And we're gonna look for the proper resistance for the temperature we're at. So here's our temp gauge. We're basically hovering right around 71 degrees. I'll throw a chart up in a minute that will show you what resistance reading we should see at 71. We will perform resistance tests at 70, 100, and 300 degrees, looking for 1,080, 1,143, and 1,553 ohms, respectively. Uh, those readings would indicate that the sensor is functioning normally. Okay, here we are with the test probes from our multimeter inserted into uh, the pens of the temperature sensor and we are getting a reading of 1,082 ohms. Okay, so we've set up a test situation here that is gonna allow our temperature sensor to sit beside this gas burner. And we're gonna use this gas burner to um, uh, raise the, uh, the temperature So approaching 100 degrees, and at 100 degrees, we want to be at 1143, um, and we're, we're, we're approaching that. Okay, here's our probe at 350, 1550. Baker's hunch is correct. Uh, the temperature sensor is reading 1550 ohms at 350. So the control board's gonna interpret that resistance as only 300 degrees and keep adding heat to the oven. Uh, so the oven is in fact getting hotter than, than 350. Um, test setup's imperfect. You know, this, this isn't laboratory here. Um, based on the feedback from the Baker, we, we really don't think it's truly 50 degrees out. So uh, just based on hunch, we're gonna cut that in half. We're gonna recalibrate uh, for a 25 degree differential. And then um, we'll use some thermometers to see what effect that's having inside the oven. All right, I'll show you on a GE how to calibrate. Bake and broil at the same time. Hold that till we get SF. Hit bake again. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we are gonna calibrate the temperature. To a negative 25 and hit start to accept that. We've plugged this uh, original temperature sensor back in. Let's see, we're just gonna push that into the oven case, like so. Uh, we'll line this little ear up and pop our screw in. Okay, we got our temperature sensor mounted up. We have a couple of analog oven thermometers, and then we've got a probe running out here to a digital thermometer. And we are gonna go bake. 350, start. 
digital readings are ranging from the high 340s to the low 360s at our 350 degree setting. The analogs are steady at 350. Ovens operate by cycling on and off a heating element. It's not a continuous temperature inside the oven. Uh, the digital thermometer is picking up all those variances as they happen and confirming that the deviations uh, are within an accepted range. The analog thermometers are slower reacting and they're giving you a better indication of the average temperature that your food would experience. And um, what we see here is that the recalibration worked. Uh, our target temp of 350 is being held nicely. Now, I targeted my tests, my recalibration, and my confirmation all at 350 because that is our most often used temp. Uh, the deviation in the sensor is not likely to be linear. So if you more often cook at 400, 425, that's where you'll want to test, calibrate, and confirm temp. The reason we begin with the temperature sensor test is it's actually faster to perform than waiting for the oven to preheat to measure actual temperatures with the thermometers. The sensor test also allows us to see what the oven control board is seeing, and that's a very important step in your troubleshooting. The results of the sensor test will let us make an educated guess about recalibration before we begin our thermometer test. If we'd found the sensor inoperable or deviating uh, wider range than, than the oven recalibration can handle, then we simply replace the sensor. And this video basically contains all the steps you would need to perform that function. Pretty straightforward. If the temperature sensor tests good, but you're still experiencing an actual temp variation that's outside the range of recalibration, through a process of elimination that's pointing to the control board and you would need to uh, replace the control board as your next step. That's not terribly complicated, but it is outside the scope of this video as mine does not yet need replacement. Most oven temperature deviations are going to be able to be handled with recalibration or replacement of the temperature sensor. So the contents of this video will hopefully help most of you get your issues resolved and get your oven dialed in uh, at the temperature that you most often use.